Hello, in this one maximized Ice Crystal Arrow build. I'm still gonna talk about uh, critical build, however, I highly suggest to do maximized, especially if you are a new player, as the damage scaling is much faster and much easier. So let's get into the build. This is the skill board for early game. So, Ice Crystal Arrow, you want Shadow Watch on that, additional call damage, quick attack, split projectile, confidence and persistence. At the same time, you really need to have Seal of Persistence. After that, for movements, it's Trick Shot with Sprint, with Disarm. For Attack Enhance, it's Marksman, with Increased Duration and Time Acceleration. For Defense Enhance, you want Bullmark of Protection, with Increased Duration and Time Acceleration. And for Shout, I recommend to do Shadow Provocation. For Arm Amplification, basically, with Hushet Shout, Lingering Shout, and Buff Activation and Hit. So when you have this link rune, it's gonna proc it automatically whenever you are hit. For zodiacs, first I'm gonna show non-specialization nodes and then specialization nodes. But remember, you can do specialization as soon as it opens up for you. Cause in order to do specialization, you need to spend certain amount of points. But I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna start with non-spec nodes. So Afros, Swamp, Gold, Stem, Flash, Dewdrop, Rainbow is a lot of damage, Breath, Dust, Scent, Stench, Artemis, Spider, and if you have 200 stats, it's Maggot for the Palm of Harmony. Leia for Display of Lightning. Atmospheric Pressure, Roar of Coldness. And right now, I'm gonna show the spec, it's gonna be Dawn. If you have Convert Mana, you can pick up something else, but if you don't have Convert Mana, pick up Convert Mana in this. Hail. And Sympathy. Charms. For those who want to start with Mirosetti, into Leo and Castor. Those are the only choices we have. Charm affixes for the maximized is this. This is basically the best you can have. It's maximized damage multiplier, damage when two-handed, because both are two-handed, and then damage multiplier. If you can have this, you can also pick up maximized chance. However, maximized chance is not that big of a deal when you have band of certainty, as its value kind of decreases. But this one is also not bad. If you can find uh, similar charms, at least try to get maximized damage and then whatever you can get. Is it HP, is it elemental resistances, whatever you can. For the legendary, you have two choices. is Strike Damage Jump, which is the best, the best. And even elemental penetration can work, but Strike Damage Jump is a priority. Relics, you want to start with Sabda. Pick up Enhanced Chaos Resist and Mental Stimulation, together with cooldown recovery speed and increased buff effect. For the second one, you want to go Aquila, pick up Enhanced Skull Penetration. For the third one, you have a few choices. You can do Castor for Sanctum Effect, and Sanctums are basically the buffs that you get on Chaos Statue when you're doing maps. So those are Swiftness, Expertise, Enhancement, and so on. However, if you don't want to do Castor, you can do something like Mirror City, and pick up Cold Energy if you are doing Cold Energies. And for the last one, it's always gonna be Boreal, cause we can only level up to level 15. And that's for enhanced HP. For itemization early, you should aim for something like this. You want a low critical base bow, which is seven. And these are the best affixes to have. Weapon speed, call damage flat, weapon attack damage flat, call damage multiplier, weapon attack damage multiplier, and maximize damage multiplier. You're not gonna have all of these, but this is what you want to have to have a really solid bow. If you can have all of them, 
you either lack materials or you don't want to craft it, you can focus only on the weapon attack damage multiplier, then weapon attack damage flat, call damage flat, and maximize damage. These four are really necessary if you want to push your damage. For Quiver, it's, it's really close, so you can get call damage flat, attack speed multiplier, chance to deal double maximize damage on hit, especially if you are still early game and you don't have band of certainty, and then elemental damage multiplier. So these are the offensive roles. For your equipment, it's up to you. You can aim for as much as survivability if you want, and if you don't, you can craft some damage. For example, on gloves, you can do some attack speed. For Latrimus, I'm gonna keep it simple. On this build, we can use Mirasetti Leo Castor and use any blue or yellow Lacrima that you drop. Depending, if you need more damage, try to find something with one-hander, two-hander, off-hand, gloves or rings of, or necklaces. If you need more defensive one, just pick up helmet, armor, boots. Even the same necklace and ring would work, it's just gonna depend on how you craft those. In my case, I have off-hand helmet armor. So on offhand, I picked up some called flat, some elemental damage multipliers. On my helmet, I picked up uh, HPs and enhanced kill rune effect for more offensive. And on my chest, I went fully offensive with enhanced kill rune duration and some critical damage multiplier. So yeah, like Remus, you try to make the best of what you have. The best Lacrima would be legendary Lacrima with three uniques. And one of those uniques has to be a two-hander. Because in two-hander spot, you want to use Breaker of Cycle. That's the best for maximize builds. Other two uniques on the legendary Lacrima, it doesn't matter. You can make... There are so many good unique items right now that you can get so much damage out of them. The best one, I would, I, I have no idea actually, but at least it has to be a two-handed weapon. Uniques for Ice Crystal and Arrow, there are two that came out uh, season six, and that is Legbone of the Wind, or Transcendent version of Legbone of the Wind, and they are both really good. Even having this one is gonna be tremendously good as it gives you movement speed amplification, and no other boots have this, so, Try to get these, they drop really easy, and you can actually get those in the black market. For maximized build specifically, you want to have Band of Certainty, as this ring is gonna increase your damage tremendously, and remember to keep using Seal of Persistence, otherwise this ring doesn't work. Later into the game, Skillboard should look something like this, so let's start with Ice Crystal Arrow. It's Awakened to Source, Shadow March Awakened to Origin, Elemental Damage Jump Awakened to Source, however, you don't have to use Elemental Damage Jump, you can still use something like Mana Storm or Harmony, or even some Quick Attack or Confidence if you still lack attack speed. Chain into Source, Split Projectile into Verity, but this is the same thing as with uh, Elemental Damage Jump. You can switch, switch this into either more Single Target Damage, because this is mainly just AoE Damage, or pick up some attack speed, smash into source, and persistence into origin. After that, seal of persistence into verity. I have a defensive seal in here, but you can use any. I chose seal of dodge. Veil of protection, it's basically the only projectile damage taken decrease uh, source in the game, so this is really nice. Just remember to activate wine whale instead of earth whale, you don't need earth whale. On Maxman, I added Decrease Duration and Enhance Effect, but remember, with Decrease Duration, you need to have a lot, a little bit more Maxman Duration, otherwise you're just gonna lose damage, so you need to test this in the Training Arena. At the same time, Totem Activation upon using Enhanced Skill into Weakened Totem with Enhanced Totem, so this is just more single target damage. And to remove the Hard CC, I picked up Shout of Justice and linked it with buff activation upon crowd control. So whenever you are crowd control and you have your Shout of Justice cooldown, 
it's going to remove the CC automatically. For Season 6, you can do this. On your Ice Crystal Arrow, you can do Extract Cold Energy and Extract Energy Link Runes. And these two Link Runes together, they give you so much more damage than anything else. At the same time, you can run Boreal's Horizon for max energy count. Itemization late into the game has too many choices, but I'm gonna try to explain at least what this guy has, and maybe it's gonna help you to understand what you are looking for as authorities on your items. So on the bow, he picked up additional poison damage to basically apply poison status effects, and if you can apply poison status effects, you can pick up uh, damage jump against poison status on your rune mastery levels. At the same time, he picked up projectile damage amplification on his uh, quiver instead of attack speed, just because he has so much attack speed that it doesn't make any sense for him anymore. So he chooses damage amplification instead. On the helmet, he is running a lot of enhanced skill rune cooldown recovery speed, skill rune effects, and attack enhanced skill rune effects, and that because Later into the game, most of your authorities are gonna buff your enhanced skill rune effect, and that, in this case, it's Marksman. But I want to point out one thing, even if he runs these, he still picks up some defense, which is HP, and main gear armor multiplier in this case, if it was dodge, it would be dodge multiplier. For shoulders, he picked up Dodum. Totem Perfect Dodge, which he recrafted into Skill Rune Effect again, the Skill Rune Effect stuff. He is running Ama plus Barrier, but if you are doing this, you can just pick up Ama Base or Dodge Base if you are doing Dodge Build. And then again, some damage multipliers and some resistances. On the chest, you always want to pick up a main defense multiplier, in this case is Dodge. And what I recommend to do, I recommend to pick up dodge rate chest, as this guy did, and then pick up armor helmet, armor shoulders, and armor gloves. In that way, you can you can basically cap your dodge rate, and at the same time, with shadow provocation, you can almost cap your armor also. So, this is a nice hybrid build. But at the same time, instead of crafting offensive chest, he picked up damage taken dampening, which is right now kind of necessary if you want to do hard maps, because you lack those damage dampenings. Everything else is just resistances, whatever resistances he needed the most. On the gloves, gloves are always offensive. This time he picked up with the resource cost dampening because he's probably running running out of mana. And he crafted called damage flat, then a lot of attack speed. And attack speed amplification. So basically this is how it looks. So to sum it up, what you do on your authority items, you enhance your skill rune effect, and in particular, it's your attack enhance. And then you just craft whatever you can or whatever you need the most. If you want to do a critical build, these basically are the changes that, that you want to do. The first one is that you want to run Caster Refraction Ring. On the Zodiacs, instead of picking up the Stardust Senses, you want to pick up Elaborate Attack. And on the skill board, you don't want to use Persistence, so instead you can use something like Shadow Archer, Extract Cold Energy, Extract Energy, Elemental Damage Amplification, Split Projectile, and Chain. Of course, you can chain Split Projectile into Mana Storm or Harmony. The same goes for Elemental Damage Jump. You don't have to use Seal of Persistence anymore, so you can pick up Seal of Condensed Elements. You want to craft Gear Critical Rate on your bow. And you want a high critical base bow instead of a low critical base bow. This is everything I want to say. This is everything I want to show. If you want to see me live streaming this build, you can find me on YouTube or Twitch. I'm basically on every single day, later after work or a little bit earlier. But yeah, GG's, have fun. Have a nice season 6, a rebirth season. And GG's, see you in the next one.